Celebrity cameos and cartoons have existed since the dawn of time. However, the ones I always found more interesting were specifically the musician cameos. Maybe it was the fact that a singer is usually singing and then you get to hear his real talking voice in a cartoon, or sometimes it's just the whole abruptness of Snoop Dogg being in your cartoon. But regardless, I love them. I'm Retro Nemo, and on today's episode of Tales from Cartoon History, we're talking about musical cameos and cartoons. Let's go. I love this topic. Now, some are weird, some are out there, and some kind of make sense, so let's just get started. Backstreet Boys and Arthur. If you didn't think you heard me right, that's totally fine. I didn't either when I first saw this. I guess I never really thought about how old the Arthur series was and how long it's been running, because at the time, I swear to God, this was a topical cameo. It was an hour-long special that focused on Francine starting a band called You Stink. After seeing the Backstreet Boys and being like, oh, so I can do this, then we watch as the band gets popular, and then the trope where Francine gets fed up with everything and then leaves the band angrily, except this time, they all reconvene at a Backstreet Boys concert, and yes, the Backstreet Boys talk, they're in it, they're drawn in Arthur style. Look at this scene, look how abrupt this is. Go! Come on, Francine! I felt the same way when I first got on the big stage. So don't look, just focus on the drum set, think about the song, and keep the music in your head at all times. You'll be fine. I mean, forget that, just look how this starts. How awkward it is. This live action footage of the Backstreet Boys with Arthur. I don't know what manager walked into the studio that day and said, all right, boys, I know you're on every billboard in Manhattan. You're playing stadiums, but we got you the Arthur gig. Clearly this is probably for a paycheck, but it is extremely entertaining now. So I don't know, I just love it. I guess it's okay to want to make it, you know, be famous and all, just so long as you don't forget that music is more important, right? Anyway, that's all I wanted to say, bye now. Right. Nice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? Andre 3000 in Class of 3000. Here's another older musician, but still one of the legends, Andre 3000 from Outkast. Except this is not a cameo, it's an entire TV show. In the magical year of 2006, Andre 3000 got his own cartoon. It had music, a diverse cast, and a theme song that slaps so hard. Now why Andre 3000 decided to make a cartoon is beyond me. In the context of the show, the musician that he plays, which seems a lot like him, Sonny Bridges, is fed up with the fame and all of the problems that that life brings, so he decides to help out students and be a music teacher. Maybe in real life, Andre 3000 was sick of all the outcast fame and decided to make a cartoon. Either way, I will say this is an incredible cartoon that still holds up to this day. I highly recommend it. I totally slept on this. I didn't realize it was this funny. It has incredible musical numbers. The theme song alone is such a bop. Just Listen to that little synthesizer start. Oh my god. Class of 3000 sing. Despite how great the show was, it seemed to have a strange and anticlimactic ending. When the show got sued, the whole thing ending with a lawsuit. They got sued by a Boston postal worker named Timothy McGee, which is the fakest sounding name ever. And I tried to look this guy up. I tried to see if we get him for an interview. I don't know if I'm bad at research, but I couldn't find anything. Well, he had an idea for a cartoon called The Music Factory. Now, back it up really quick. Class of 3000 is a show about a music teacher and his group of kids, and they go on adventures, and it's like all music. Well, The Music Factory featured a young corporate type with music production aspirations, as well as a tough, full of attitude female executive, a young techno whiz sound engineer, a talented young Asian singer, and a central, energetic young singer and rapper. I'll give them the fact that that sounds like an extremely boring description of Class of 3000, but I do not think that they stole the idea. First of all, I don't know why Andre 3000 would decide to steal a cartoon, and what was pretty much the peak of his musical career. And then there's things that don't really even line up that much like yeah he had a young Asian singer but in class of 2000 they're Asian twins I mean it's not just one of them and I don't even think he sings I don't know it sucks that the show had to go out that way it's really funny there's like two seasons go watch it it's a great cameo because it's the whole series moving on Donald Glover and Tyler the creator in regular show if you asked me right now what I thought the perfect musical cameo would be I wouldn't even be able to comprehend something this awesome let alone in regular show in this episode the fictional rap group crew crew is at the park causing trouble with their fans 
at beats and their hard rhymes. I don't think I've ever sounded whiter. Anyways, they end up getting in a rap battle with Mordecai and Rigby and Pops, who use like old timey language to combat their raps. It was a really funny episode, and it also featured the voice talents of Childish Gambino and Tyler the Creator. They both gave great verses. This episode is just really great musically if you enjoy rap, and it's almost like getting bonus verses from your favorite artists, which if you're like me, you've heard all of their stuff a bajillion times. So finding new materials like striking gold. Looking back on this episode, I don't think I appreciated it enough when I first saw it. I definitely didn't even recognize the voice cameos. But doing research, I found this adorable genius forum, which shows people first talking about how cool regular show is. It, it's like years old. I just read this. This is adorable. Okay, hold up. You want to talk words and verse, but your face is distracting. So ugly it bugs me. Take care of that mess and sweep it under the rug, please. So trust me, you're only taking matters from bad to worse. Only solution is to turn it round and reverse. Crew, crew's coming at you. Say it twice. Don't forget it. Y'all better catch up to where we're at. You're behind the times. Can't compete without your rhymes. So you better say your goodbyes. Nicki Minaj and Steven Universe. This surprised me. In season one of Steven Universe, they were able to get an A-list celebrity, Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj played Sugalite, the fusion of Garnet and Amethyst. In that episode, Sugalite was having conflicts with Pearl because Sugalite was crazy and destructive, and Pearl, I think, just wanted to be a part of things. I don't really remember it that well. She did a great job voicing the character, and it was a really cool cameo. <laughs> Great it feels to be me. That Sugalite? You got it, baby. They've even made in jokes in the show since then about how they didn't have enough money to book Nicki Minaj again for Sugalite. I call this segment. You like that little man? Because everybody loves a callback. <laughs> She's not actually in this episode. Do we still have to pay her? Yes? Fair enough. Snoop Dogg in a lot of things. Snoop Dogg has definitely mellowed out in the last few years, and he's more of a public icon now than a rapper, in my opinion. I think he's, at this point, been in just about everything that's ever existed. You could probably find Snoop Dogg in the background. And that includes a long list of cartoons. Just a few of these major cartoons were Futurama, Turbo, The Simpsons, Mike Tyson's Mysteries, The Boondocks, Sanjay and Craig had Snoop Dogg. That had to have been a paycheck thing. Snoop Dogg also appeared in an episode of The Cleveland Show and King of the Hill. On top of of an episode of Black Dynamite, and are you ready for this? This has to be the weirdest one yet. An episode of Big Time Rush, a Christmas special. He was in an animated music video segment, so that technically counts. He was also in Arthur and The Invisibles. Just Snoop Dogg's done everything. You can also count the professional rapper Lil Dicky music video if you want. I think that's kind of kind of counts. But yeah, those are just a few of the Snoop Dogg cameos. Every Snoop Dogg cameo is great in my opinion. Spread them around. Get Snoop Dogg in more cartoons. Hashtag Snoop Dogg and Infinity Train. I want that. May it please the court. I mean, may it plizzle the kazizzle. Proceed. Beastie Boys in Futurama. This is a great cameo because the Beastie Boys themselves were sort of used to push forward a joke, and it seemed like they were really in on it. Because in the episode, Fry always wanted to see the Beastie Boys, but he got frozen for a thousand years, so when he comes in and sees them, he says the line, I've been waiting a thousand years to see these guys, which is clever. Time, time joke. The Beastie Boys played themselves in iconic Futurama glass head jar form, as they sang their songs being lifted by men in black theater suits, and eventually ending with a barbershop shop quartet of sabotage telling you all it's a sabotage sabotage yeah Again, I love this because it's such like a weirdly meta thing that I, I feel like the Beastie Boys are in on this joke they're doing a great job and I bet you didn't know that they were in Futurama unless you saw the episode it's yeah hey fellas hey I want to meet my friends Bender Fry and Leela you know we're really not that interested in meeting them. The Slim Shady Show. Again, this really isn't the cameo as more of a musician got their own cartoon. In the year 2000, Eminem tried to make his own South Park, basically. With various versions of his own personality, it sucked. Not much is known about this cartoon besides the fact that it's ugly to look at, disgusting sounding, and honestly, it makes me really scared in like a primal child-like way. Like, I feel like I want to knock on my parents' door as gave me nightmares. Most of it is just making fun of the current pop scene that that was in at the time it was made, which is early 2000s, so a lot of jokes don't really land anymore. And again, maybe this isn't my cup of tea, but I think it looks incredibly ugly. Doesn't age well. The entire nature of the Slim Shady show is kind of confusing, because after doing a bunch of research, the information's kind of conflicting. A quick Google search will show that it aired for three years on Fox of all places. Though if you do a little bit more research, you find this eerie behind the scenes video from when the show first came out. And it seems to explain things more in depth. Apparently it was a 
web series and MTV wanted them to do it. A web series would make sense since I don't know how this could actually air on television with how raunchy it is. And the fact that it had like that classic Flash animation style. And the fact that all of the episodes released on DVD in 2001. Real quick, I'm sorry if anyone paid actual money for this. It just doesn't make any sense why I would say that it aired for three years. I don't know, the whole thing's a mystery. Just watch this behind the scene video. It's so freaky. The one who looks the least interested is Eminem, which is really ironic. Usually it's, it's, it's fun to do the cartoons. It allows me to slip in a character and be able to make up my own sometimes as we go along. But yeah, all you need to know is that it was very bad. It's still better than Kamikaze. Just gonna put that out there. Logic in Rick and Morty. <laughs> oh, you think I'm gonna talk about this for real? No, this was the worst cameo ever. Get this, get this out of my face. I'm not even gonna talk about this. This was bad. Every musician ever in The Simpsons. Dude, I don't even know. This list is too long. I know there's the joke that, oh, Simpsons did it. Simpsons did it first. Well, that I think is the case with just every musician. Some musician cameos in The Simpsons were really iconic, like Michael Jackson. What'd you say your name was? Michael Jackson. Doesn't ring a bell. Well, have you heard of MTV? Nope. Motown. Nope. Beat it. You beat it. Thriller. What was that last one? Thriller. Nope. Others like the White Stripes are just fun little call-outs to their music and are great little products of their time. But a lot of these just sort of fade into the background. So I'll dedicate this segment into reading a billboard list of all of the musical cameos in The Simpsons. I don't know if this is accurate completely. This is most of them I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna watch every episode of The Simpsons yet. That might be another video. So without further ado, here's the list. Ron Taylor. Tony Bennett. Daryl Cooley. Ringo Starr. Michael Jackson. Chip Ronnie. Aerosmith. Finn. Joe Jackson. Eddie Blackhawk. Finn. Finn. These are just a few of many musical artists that The Simpsons have had. I know they did a Kesha theme song. I know we're all trying to forget it. Sorry I brought it up. I don't know. The Simpsons are unstoppable. Jay-Z in Warren Buffett's Secret Millionaire Club. Now, I, I hear you. You're probably saying to yourself, what in God's great name is the Secret Millionaire Club? Well, I really hope you're sitting because you just want to be sitting right about now. The Secret Millionaire Club was a show about Warren Buffett hanging out with kids and teaching them how to get rich. I'm not even kidding. The description's in the title, people. It's Warren Buffett. He has a secret millionaire club with a bunch of kids that just met him. I don't know why Warren Buffett wants to be hanging out with kids, and I don't know why he wants it to be secret, but regardless, they're gonna make some cash. Now, I know I'm already making a separate video on Secret Millionaire's Club, so I'm not gonna go too much into it. Just know that this show is one of the best worst things that I've ever seen ever. It's cheaply animated. There's animatics mixed in with the animation. It's awkward. It's stilted. The whole concept is just astounding to me, and I will give it credit for having the second best, I will say it again, second best voice cameo in any cartoon ever. Jay-Z in this episode is so phoned in, so uncaring, so mediocre that you can see the phone being handed to him and the lines in front of him as he says, okay, I'll just read this. All right, fine. Oh, just, just, just please listen. Bradley, Elena, Jones, huh? Lisa, Juan has told me so much about you. Jay-Z! What you did for your school was wonderful. You should keep at it. Oh, the context is the Secret Millionaire Club just raised money for their school, and then Warren Buffett brings out a fucking nowhere. Do you want to meet Jay Z? And they're like, "There's no way he got Jay Z." And then it cuts right to a montage of a Jay Z song in New York. You just know that this only existed because Warren Buffett had the funding. Jay Z got that money. He got that paycheck. Go Jay Z. Go get that money, buddy. The story of OJ's a good song. As a team, you can put your interests in business to good use. That's what I've done. Being a good businessman has allowed me to help others, like my charity, the Sean Carter Scholarship Foundation. Now, you may notice that I said second best voice cameo and you're wondering what could top this. Well, Millie Vanilli in the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. W what did you what, what, what did you want from me? Millie Vanilli is one of the most interesting bands I've ever seen. They went from nobodies to on top of the world to completely knocked down in such a short period of time. This, of course, was due to a lip-syncing controversy that revealed that they they didn't even sing on the record, and all of their hit songs were kind of frauds. They got their Grammys taken away. They were disgraced. Though if you look deeper into the story, there's a sad tale of two young men who were taken advantage of by a corporate record label who just wanted people to look good. They signed on the dotted line at the wrong time. They were forced into this. They just wanted to make music. But forget about all that because this episode clearly aired before any controversy. It opens up with Princess Peach wearing a Millie Vanilli t-shirt, excited to go to the concert because who 
isn't? It also turns out that Bowser's bratty daughter also really wants to see Millie Vanilli. How are these two plots gonna converge? I don't know, let's just, let's just watch. So <laughs> Mario and the crew, as they put it, sneak off to the human world so they can go to the Millie Vanilli stadium concert. And then we get a little bit of Millie Vanilli music, sort of. This whole part is, they're, they're drawn so weird. But then, uh-oh, King Koopa himself comes with his airship thing and abducts Millie Vanilli for his daughter. I'm not even mad, Bowser. I'm just, I'm just disappointed, Bowser. So she takes him hostage and says, do whatever I want or else I'm gonna turn you into accountants, which I guess is, in a dark way, Millie Vanilli's worst repressed nightmare. And then they're like, no, you won't. And she's like, bitch, the fuck I will. And then snap, they become accountants. Oh my God. They start freaking out saying anything but this. I don't know why accounting isn't that bad. Just, just listen real quick. No, we're nuts. We're dweebs. This is terrible. You turn us back to normal people right now. See what I mean? Best cameo ever. We're on the same page. Okay. So anyways, Mario and the gang come and save the day. I don't know. What else were you expecting to happen? A free Millie Vanilli, invite him on stage for the concert. This awkward thing happens, and then the episode is drawn to a close. I love this cameo so much. First of all, you take Super Mario Brothers Super Show, which is the god peak of animation in general, and then you throw a band as controversial and unappealing as Millie Vanilli into the context of the universe and build them up to be like this big giant band that plays stadiums. Ah, oh, it's such a product of its time. It's so 90s. It's such a cash grab. This list was not in any order, but I'm gonna say right now, this is the best voice cameo of all time. You could put that on my gravestone. It's time to rock! Well guys, there you have it. Those were some cartoon musical cameos from bands and musicians. If there's any musician cameos that I didn't cover that you enjoy, leave them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. As always, I want to know what you guys think in general. Did you enjoy this video? Did you not? Let us know in those comments down below. Tweet to us at IsRetroNemo or at Roundtable Vids with our Instagram and Facebook under the same name. If you want to consider helping out the Roundtable, you can check us out on Patreon. There you can get exclusive access to cool things like scripts and avatars. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, share it, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell to stay in the loop with all things animation guys i'm retro nemo this is a tale from animation history and i'll see you next time peace